This piece by Ali Velci, what I did is I took out a whole lot of the spaces and I also cut a few superfluous uh, parts out, but it's a very important piece that you need to listen to because what it shows here is where we're heading to. But most importantly, this is something that we need others to see. We need to inoculate people against what is actually occurring. Take a moment, process this. This is the United States of America. Did you know that? Sounds like a silly question, but I mean it. Because little by little, over the last three and a half years, this country has changed. Have you noticed that it's not the same America we once knew? Well, if you haven't, that's part of the point. That's how democracy starts to slip into authoritarianism. It doesn't happen all at once. But at some point, you start to look around you and you realize that the values of the country that you know and love have been replaced with more sinister ideals by the people in charge. And you realize that those sinister Sinister ideals are designed to keep those in power in power. It's not about you or us, it's about them. And anything that goes against those sinister ideals, no matter how central they are to the founding of this country, gets tossed aside. Rules fail, norms change, institutions begin to crumble. This isn't some futuristic dystopian novel about America. This is America in 2020. America is in crisis. Our democracy is under attack. The historic social unrest, the recession, the ever-raging pandemic, now bringing those sinister ideals into sharper relief than we ever could have imagined. The Constitution of the United States protects the freedom of free speech and assembly and protest. Not in Portland, Oregon tonight. Armed federal agents are patrolling the streets of Portland. Federal forces wearing camouflage and military gear as if they were at war, using tear gas on demonstrators. According to a lawsuit filed by Oregon's Attorney General last week, federal agents, quote, have been using unmarked vehicles to drive around downtown Portland, detain protesters, and place them into the officers' unmarked vehicles. And breaking just now, a federal judge has denied a request by the Oregon Attorney General's office for an order that would have required federal law enforcement officers in Portland to identify themselves when making arrests and would place limits on the detention and arrest of protesters. It's one of several lawsuits challenging the Trump administration's deployment of federal officers, but the deployment itself is only part of the problem. Since when do we tear gas peaceful protesters in America or shove them into vans? It's not just the actions, it's the justification for them. Listen to how the President of the United States describes the situation in Portland. Let us go in, we'll clean it up. We'll clean it up. Now in Portland, we had to do it because that was, that's their anarchist. That's even, that's a level that people haven't seen, but they're anarchists, and they were going wild for 51 days. Right, let's be clear. At no point has Portland seen anarchists. The city's not going wild. And for that matter, no city that has seen protests for racial and social justice since the death of George Floyd has devolved into any of the anarchy that Trump talks about. Cities are not burning. No one is coming for the suburbs. Homeland Security official Ken Cuccinelli called out Portland protesters for having gas masks and shields claiming claiming that protesters were preparing for violence. The protesters in Portland are protecting themselves from agents of the government of the United States, a government not allowed to use tear gas on its enemies and adversaries, but who used tear gas on them. When I covered the protests in Minneapolis, I had a gas mask and a hardened helmet and a bulletproof vest, not to protect myself from anarchists, but to protect myself from authorities. I was caught in the middle of four different tear gas deployments. So were many of my colleagues covering protests across the country. The Constitution protects free speech, and yet our government appears to be criminalizing it. These protesters are, in the words of the First Amendment, quote, petitioning their government for the redress of grievance, or as we say today, fighting injustice. They're doing it without the tools of power, without tear gas and rubber bullets. They have their hands and their feet, and sometimes they link arms to protect each other. And yet they are demonized by those in power to inspire fear in Americans, fear that in turn is used to remain in power and put put even darker ideals in place. It's why Trump tweets about law and order every couple of days. It's why he just lied in a tweet to, quote, suburban housewives claiming that Joe Biden would destroy their neighborhoods. He wants you to be afraid. He wants you to think that only he has the power to take away that fear. It's a zero sum game. If someone else gains, you lose. It's such an old trick and it keeps on working. It's an old trick and it keeps on working. I wanted you to see this. This is a very important piece that Ali Velshi just did. It puts a whole lot of what's going on into context on our path to fascism and how in as much as we should not have another term of Donald Trump if everything else is equal, the ability that many fascists have to really frame something, to have you change your mind 
because of the things they instill instill into your mind in sort of a very uh, subliminal method, it actually works sometimes, as Ali Velsh just said at the end. So folks, don't forget, this sort of this sort of narrative must be shared so that we can inoculate people from what Donald Trump and his fascists are actually doing to the American democracy. I'm Egberto Willis, host of Politics Done Right, an independent news program. I post several news videos of interest every day. I ask you so kindly to subscribe to my channel and please leave me some comments. Thank you very much.